Hi, I'm Jerome from Fastlane. Welcome to this series on the Cisco Unify wireless networking solution. In this series, we are looking at radio resource management. I'm trying to show you how this thing actually works. This video is the third one in a series of four, and here we're going to try to have a look at how access point channels are changed by the RRM. So in the previous video, we verified how RRM works, how the signals were exchanged between access points and reported to the controllers so that each controller could know which access point shared the same wireless space and from there uh, the RF group leader would be uh, deciding which channel would be changed in which way. That's where we are. Okay, so the channel assignment relies on the RRM messages. So you need to have this exchange between the access points uh, for this uh, channel assignment algorithm to be triggered. The game here is that as you receive the RRM message and as you forward this information to your controller, you give the message, but along with this message you provide information such as the noise level that you heard from um, the, the environment that, that can tell your controller if some other non-wireless devices may be interfering with your own signal. You'll also send the client load which is contained in the RRM message, so that's the neighboring access point client load, so you'll know how many clients are already connected on the other controller. And I will show you why you need this information in a few minutes. And you also give the interference level, that is to say noise coming or signal coming from other access points, so that's 802.11 noise coming from access points which do not belong to your RF group. So all this information is collected through the RRM information message and sent to the controller, the RF group leader. With this information, the RF group leader is going to decide, to try to decide if there is an issue and if changing the channel of one access point or several access points might be solving this issue. And we say might be because it's not always the case. So the controller is going to try to calculate its predictive calculation, right? If changing the access point channel, if there is an issue, for example, several access points being on the same channel, if changing the channel of one access point would increase the average client SNR of at least 5 dBs. So that's predictive because as long as we don't do it, we cannot really know. But it's going to take into account the other access points on the new uh, candidate channel, um, the noise on the candidate channel, and so on to decide if maybe changing the channel will increase uh, the SNR of the clients. If it does, again, every 600 seconds the instruction will be sent off uh, this um, uh, RF group leader. It will say to the relevant controller, change your access point number whatever uh, from channel whatever to whatever channel. When the access point does that, be aware that the client will be disconnected. The access point is not going to tell its client because there is no 8 to 11 process by which the access point can tell. So basically what happens is that suddenly the access point disappears from channel 6 and reappears on channel 11. As the clients lose their access point, they start scanning up and of course they will very fast find the, the access point back on the next channel and reassociate. Usually this process takes a few milliseconds, so you don't realize it. Even if you are in a phone call, you don't really realize that there is something, a gap in the conversation. You don't even hear it. What is interesting in this process is that if changing the um, channel doesn't solve the issue or doesn't increase the SNR by 5 dB at least, well, the controller doesn't do it. This is why sometimes you have several access points in the same space and they seem to stay on the same channel. And you would think, hey, RRM should do something for that. Well, it should, yeah, and it did. Actually, it calculated that maintaining them on the same channel was pretty much the best solution. Changing any access point would not increase the SNR for any client, so that would not solve the problem. So RRM is in, act in action here, but it decided that maintaining them was best. Also, you can configure a controller to avoid what we call the domino effect. That is to say, you do not change the channel on the access point that has most clients. You try to change the access point that has no client or very little client, so that this one doesn't affect too many clients at a time. Because if you change uh, the access point that has too many clients, what you might do actually is push some clients to reassociate to another access point instead of going back to the same one. So basically, you create a difference in the load, and that might change the pattern of your network. So not changing the uh, most crowded access point is a wise choice. Let me show you how you do that on a controller. 
So here I'm on my controller and I'm going to DCA, dynamic channel assessment, uh, assignment. Sorry. So first thing I would like to you to sh see here is that it's set to automatic. You can freeze it and if you say freeze, you can say I don't want you to change the channel automatically, I just want you to do it every time I ask you. But be careful, if you do that, you say freeze and you say invoke channel uh, update once, it's not going to change in a snap. It's going to wait the next 600 seconds period and at the end of which it's going to do the calculation and decide if the channel needs to be changed. So we say once, but it's not at once, it's not now, it's at the next period. So off, of course, you turn it off. Default is automatic and probably in most environments you want to leave it to automatic. Interval is 10 minutes. So the way it works is that you can decide if you want to run it every 10 minutes or every hour or every um, day you know you choose it. Depend on how you, you think that this how, how disruptive you think that this uh, change might be. Anchor time, so that's what it is. You define an anchor time, let's say 5 a.m. And the way it works is that your controller, the first time it boots, is going to do this process. 10 times every 10 minutes. You cannot change that first row. So the first time the controller boots, it's going to do the RRN calculation uh, 10 times for the f uh, every 10 minutes. So that's 100 minutes. After which, it's going to look at the anchor time and say, okay, next time I do it will be, in my case, at 5. And then from 5 a.m., I will do it every 10 minutes. So you know, there is the boot time RRN calculation, then you can define uh, after that, how often you want it to do it and when you want to do it. Very typically, you want to do it, you know, let's say every four or five or six hours during daytime. That's typically how you want to do it. All right, and then you can decide avoid foreign AP interferences. So if you do that, you're basically saying if you hear an access point on one of my channels, say channel six, try to avoid channel six. So your RRM calculation will try to go away from channel 6. So that might be wise if you have one single channel on which you have a very noisy neighbor, in which case you will be avoiding it. But on the BG uh, radio, that's probably not a good choice. On the A radio, yeah, it can be. On the BG, you have only three non-overlapping channels. So if you start removing one, you're limiting yourself a lot. But on A, it might be interesting if you have uh, noisy neighbors, if I may say. Avoid Cisco AP load. What you're saying here is take into account the number of clients on each access point. That's the feature we saw a minute ago. That is to say, you're not going to change, well, you will try not to change the most crowded access point first. You're going to try to change the access point on which you have not too many clients. So that's something I would check always. And avoid non a 11 a noise. So that's you know everything that creates a noise level that is higher than normal um, that you want to try to avoid. So if you see that on any channel you have some noise which is not an access point, well you may want to avoid this channel by clicking that that box here. DCA channel sensitivity. That is how um, reactive your changes would be. If you set it to very high. And if you click apply, for example, you will see that the sensitivity is 5 dB. That the slightest change that you say 5 dB possible improvement of my network will trigger the RRM calculation. When you had 20 dBs before, you were saying, if I get a 20 dB improvement, well, yes, I'm going to work on this RRM channel. If I get less than that, I'm not going to do it. Channel width, that's the uh, typical A211A uh, and A211N feature, so by which we have um, a channel bounding to 40 MHz. And here you can choose a channel list, so you can choose which channels are supposed to be serviced by um, your access points. In next video we're going to look at the power control 